How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and today I wanted to give you a bit of an update from the PTR. I've been playing quite a bit, actually, and I've been testing every single new change in the game. Just trying to see what the meta may look like as the PTR is going through a few builds and phases, and it looks like we might be getting some of this stuff relatively soon. So there will be a lot of changes, and we talked about this in a previous video. So I'm going to give you my thoughts on those changes and how that's going to affect each weapon's build and the meta change. So this might be a bit of a long video, uh, but I'll put timestamps so you can skip to the weapon of your choice if you just want to hear about something in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up here, and I have a lot of builds on my screen as you can see. I played around with everything that was new, right? Everything that needed to be tested, everything that was a change cooldown adjustments, damage adjustments, all of that. So I'm going to give you kind of the verdict from what I think uh, these weapons are going to be looking like into the future. So we'll go ahead and start with the left side category. We'll start with the sword and shield. I played around with a lot of different builds. I was able to find a DPS build that seemed to kind of be working, which is odd. Uh, they lowered the cooldown on Leaping Strike. It was 25 seconds, now it's 18. And then they also increased, or kind of gave a tooltip to what this uh, slow was doing, as well as some extra range, and they've slowly been buffing it. They buffed the damage on it as well. So it might actually be good now. Uh, cowardly Punishment is very strong, and what people tend to do when you have a sword and shield is they ignore you. And when they do that, this could turn that into a very big mistake. Because all of a sudden, if they get hit in the back with this move, they are now slowed by 50% for 8 seconds. Literally an eternity. It's actually insane. Uh, and then usually you're going to be running heavy armor with some sort of a sword build so that you can stay alive. So this is going to be more realistically like... 10 maybe even 20, 12 seconds slow so this player is literally just not going to be able to move on the battlefield uh it actually can be quite punishing as, as the name implies cowardly punishment so i could totally see a build working where somebody has like this dps sword build i take a lot of these talents in here to get some damage but then they also have the defiant stance to make them tanky and a good mix of like strength and stamina so maybe something like 249 strength with the rest in constitution uh, that could really nail this build home and make you a threat while being super obnoxious to people trying to get away from you uh, so i could definitely see this having some high impact and the reverse stab would just further serve to get all your cooldowns back so there's a lot of refreshment and replenishment here uh, one talent I would like to get is one with the shield, but it didn't seem to lay out with the rest of the things that I had in mind here. But I think you could see potentially some DPS sword builds, particularly in PvP, coming into the future. As far as PvE goes, I don't think the DPS sword build is too great, but it's good if you're a tank, right? So you can definitely do damage while being a tank, so it can definitely be fantastic for that. The next one we'll go ahead and hop into is the Rapier. It received a lot of adjustments uh, to the bleed side of things, particularly Tondo. There was some other adjustments to the right side tree with Repose getting a lower cooldown and momentum, but I think where this build will really start to shine is in player versus environment, PvE. Tondo does insane damage, and now its cooldown has been cut in half, so you're going to be able to get this back constantly. Two key things from this would be 1% cooldowns on any rapier hit and 5% cooldowns on any critical hit. So the idea is to keep stacking a Tondo bleed and then finish it off with the flourish and finish and proc all those bleed stacks for 150% of the bleed damage. So I think this weapon is going to be monstrous in PvE. In terms of PvP, it still suffers from melee syndrome of being really hard to hit people and then you also have to chase them down with limited mobility it's just i don't know it's weird dex warp, dex weapons are in a weird spot for pvp because they tend to not have a lot of grit and it's hard to balance getting enough damage with enough constitution and being tanky at the same time uh it seems that they want dex weapons to rely on mobility and stamina but they just can't realistically do that at the moment maybe in a perfect world where we see super end game items and the uh, like tip top end of things, but we'll see how that plays out over time. Uh, but for now, I would say the verdict is left side blood tree is going to be fantastic for PVE. Uh, Grace tree is still strong for PVP and can be good if paired with the bow. Uh, but do keep in mind that at the end of the day, it is what it is. Um, we all know the familiar meta of 
great axe, you know, Warhammer, some mages and healers, right? That's been the standard for a while. Uh, so another thing I wanted to play around with was the hatchet. The hatchet received a lot of buffs to the cooldown of some of the abilities, Rending Throw being one of them. The cooldown was lowered quite a lot, cut in half actually. And then the Aerial Transmission debuff, which is the disease cloud that lowers healing. I don't even know if most people know about that because throwing hatchets is kind of a meme before. Uh, it definitely got a buff as well. So in additions with the buffs or the nerfs actually coming to the life staff in this patch, all healing is being nerfed and reduced. This might start to have some impact and weight in the metagame. So this is probably not going to be a DPS PvE tree, but this could be a very good PvP tree. Especially with Infected Throw lowering the healing efficiency by 30%, and healers getting a nerf this patch. If they have Infected Throw on them, you might actually be able to kill them. Yeah, you might be able to take one of them down, just like with one or two DPS, uh, with all of these factors in place, right? And so I've been messing around with the hatchet a little bit, and I... I, you know, I put it on and I noticed that on the PTR, the throw doesn't work. Yep. This doesn't work. You can't do anything. The same is for javelin throw for spear too, so please fix this, Amazon. Like, I, I want to throw some hatchets and some spears. Uh, but the other ones do work. As you can see, I can throw this little um, hatchet there with the actual ability. And you can see that little chuck animation. But it has quite a generous hitbox and I think it may be quite good to be fair. A uh, bit of a limited range on some of the throws, so you kind of have to play this like mid-game where you just like throw the axes if this thing was working. Uh, but you can get quite a lot of nice cooldowns on there and some good abilities. Uh, they buffed the amount of rend coming out from the uh, actual skill itself. So you're going to lower their armor, keep them slow, they buffed the slow. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting things there. They've been slowly doing a little bit of things to the hatchet tree, the throw tree over time. And I think it might be at the point now where it could be viable. Not everybody, right? But a couple people, particularly in war and PvP, this could be a thing. Uh, so maybe look into that, play around with it, let me know what you think. The next ability or next uh, weapon is going to be the spear. The spear received a lot of buffs, quite massive buffs actually. Uh, this one scale skewer has a gigantic buff which is going to increase the bleed dot duration literally got doubled so it was doing 10 percent weapon damage every second for 10 seconds now it's doing 20 percent weapon damage so if you add up the total damage on that it's going to be about three 200 percent for the full 10 second duration and then the 125 from the hit so that's roughly 325 percent uh, damage over time and you can keep refreshing that constantly uh, so as you notice I don't have the final talent and bleed here nor do I have the bleed extension and it's because there's a lot of skills in the uh, tree for spear that give you cooldown reduction and from what I've seen you can get this skewer cooldown back up before it's 10 second bleed is done so even if I have a 20 second bleed on someone as long as I keep reapplying it for a 10 second one it should be about the same damage over time and then there's a couple other abilities to help with that being, you know, after you use an ability you dodge, you get all your cooldowns back. And the kick coming in from Vault Kick, when you hit somebody with the Vault Kick, it's going to lower all your spear cooldowns. Uh, the other buff was to Sweep. Sweep got a massive buff on the downward damage after the follow-up Sweep, which is further increased by this Mer Merciless Strength talent, which is really going to ramp up that DPS. So overall, it's getting a what 225% total damage for the move, which gets increased by a 25% flat base, not just the weapon damage, but flat base buff from this knockdown talent and there also is a perk that applies a bleed when you sweep somebody so that's going to do even more damage i think it's 50 percent extra damage over four seconds so this can be quite a punishing ability especially since it comes with a cc it's a hard cc it knocks them down and it's on a 10 second cooldown with all the spear talents to refresh cooldown this will be up every like two to three seconds if played correctly so this can be quite a powerful ability they did buff perforate as well on some damage and side Cyclone, but I played around with them and it's just not the best. So Perforate still being a fantastic PvE ability, just a little hard to use and pull off in PvP 
from what I have seen, at least. But this will give you the strong ability to open up with a Vault Kick, which is a Grit Stun, and it will break through any Grit. And then you can follow it up with a Skewer or a Sweep, and it's a true combo, so you can get all of those parts up. Uh, so you'll be able to get two-part combo. So you can Vault Kick into Sweep and then Coup de Gras, and that's going to be a true combo, and that will do quite a bit of damage. It's actually really impressive versus melee. Uh, chasing people is not good. That's never been the spear's strong suit. But if you pair this with a bow and someone has to come to you, that's a different story because now all of a sudden they need to come to you and the pressure's on. If it's a melee, you can easily deal with them with this weapon. So keep that in mind. Spear, not too shabby right now. Definitely strong. And in terms of PvE, this weapon's going to be monstrous. Actually monstrous. Because of the skewer buff, which is going to make it do a lot more damage over time. And in addition to the sweep cooldown being lowered, but this deadly consistency is going to be insane in PvP. It's stacking up 10% damage three times as long as you keep heavy attacking. So the more you heavy attack, the more damage you're going to deal. And it's actually going to start to pile up and hurt quite a lot. So I'm interested to see this weapon. It looks like it may be in a good position coming into the meta here. The next one's going to be Great Axe. Same old story here. However, I think that they changed the way this gravity talent is working slightly. It's going to root people for 0.25 seconds as opposed to the slight stoppage or pull that it did before. So it's going to be a little bit odd, but I think that the root will cause a lot of problems for people in PvP. Because a root means that you can't use, like, movement abilities. You can't do a lot of things, right? You can't even dodge. So we'll see how that all plays out. I tried to play around with Heavy Pull again. It still doesn't work on the PTR, which is just sad to see. So I would definitely take Enduring Strikes instead of Heavy Pull. Um, but other than that, I think all of these talents that causes pull will be very good synergy with the gravity ability. So something like, you know, having these three main core abilities here would probably be a good go-to. And then, of course, your standard passives on the left side Bloodlust tree. So all in all, Great Axe, not much changed, but still a fantastic weapon. So next we'll go into the other strength weapon, which is going to be the Warhammer. It did get some changes, surprisingly, because this weapon is so powerful in PvP right now, but it got buffed. So, interesting decision. Now, Armor Breaker is going to penetrate more armor. It was 15%. It is now 20%, making this a very strong option. It is actually a true combo if you hit them with the Shockwave, which also lowers their armor with the perk 19%. You will then hit a follow-up Armor Breaker for a 20% Armor Shred, putting them at 40% reduced armor and making them super brittle. You can explode almost anybody with this. It's actually crazy. Uh, Path of Destiny being another good skill to take with this. Not much has changed there. That's pretty standard. Stun, stun, stuns. That's what the game is all about, right? Like getting into war, putting out those stuns, getting CC on people, locking them down, and getting them killed. So this ham this weapon is going to be incredibly powerful, especially with all the buffs coming out. In terms of PvE, Mighty Gavel got buffed even more. It's going to be hitting harder. So it's actually an insane ability now. And Justice for All also got buffed. So this is probably going to be one of the highest damage dealing weapons especially in lazarus instrumentality where they're all weak against strike damage because they're ancients you're going to be pumping out insane damage with this so pve is going to be phenomenal on this weapon they also added some more like buff debuff duration so like this was 15 percent slowed stamina regeneration for pvp before now it is 20 percent so it can get quite oppressive so a lot of these talents in here are crazy the warhammer is just beyond s tier right now it's very good it's very very good in any situation pve pvp doesn't matter fantastic weapon uh so enough about that one we'll go on to the bow i see a lot of people talking about bow changes on the ptr and also just in general i see it on reddit um i think that a lot of this stuff is about the same if not maybe even a little bit better poison cloud was reduced on the cooldown but then they reduced the amount of damage for a direct hit with poison cloud but in my experience poison cloud you may direct hit one person but generally when it lingers in a war setting it hits multiple people and that's where you get the bulk of the damage from so that being nerfed by a little bit just means just don't take that talent and just take the rest of them. Uh, the Penetrating Shot is a fantastic ability. It still reigns true. They tried to lower down the cooldown on Rapid Shot. 
and a couple of other moves, but the problem is that that is not the problem. Like, that's not the issue with Rapid Shot. The issue is that you're rooted in place for, like, three seconds while you go through this awful animation of firing three arrows, and it's... Oh, man. You might as well just stun yourself for three seconds while everyone just comes up and kills you so that's the issue with this we need some mobility by using it or it needs to happen really fast or something i i don't know uh but the cooldown was lowered quite a lot 22 seconds to 14 seconds so you could do some really good pve damage with this but in terms of pvp it is not going to be a great ability but that being said, if PvE is all you do, this is going to hit really hard, and it's going to be up quite a lot, actually. And compared with a lot of other uh, perks and also talents with the bow, you're going to be getting your cooldowns a lot, so it could be quite impressive. They lowered the radius on Reign of Arrows, but I didn't see that. For me, it just looked about the same. So I don't know what the deal with that is, but we'll see how it goes in there. Uh, the next thing we had was a few musket buffs. They buffed Sticky Bomb. It now does like 60% more weapon damage, 50 or 60. Uh, so it actually hits really hard now. Uh, the thing with Sticky Bomb is you can dodge it in a PvP scenario, even if it's stuck onto you, if you time it right. Uh, so that's, that's a thing. But it does hit for a lot of DPS, and I could easily see this being chucked onto like hold points and wars or just over the wall in an outpost rush. We've had a few people throw some Kobe's over and, and get some people. It's been quite a fun ability, but we've been having a lot of fun with this because it just reminds us of, of like uh, Halo 3, right? Like just plasma grenades and sticking people. So it was fantastic for sure. They lowered the cooldown on shooter stance as well and a couple other abilities. So this begins to be a little bit more viable. Shooter stance was really good before because you could kind of stay really far back and just unload on somebody and it definitely brings the dps powder shot being a you know powder burn being one of the staple musket abilities i've tried to play around with power shot a little bit but i don't know what i think of it i mean they, they lowered the uh cooldown on it by three seconds but it still just seems like a the inferior version of powder burn maybe but that's just me um, so there might be some better avenues uh, to explore there. And uh, other than that, not too much changed, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, Sticky Bomb, fantastic ability. Shooter Stance got buffed even more. So I could definitely see Muskets bringing a lot of single target damage. And even a little bit more group AoE damage with that Sticky Bomb now. So definitely solid changes for that one. Fire Staff received a lot of nerfs just to passives all around the board. They also got kind of a nerf on Pillar of Fire. It got buffed, but then they supposedly removed the double hit. But then some people are saying sometimes it does or doesn't. I don't know. Weird stuff on this, but definitely still going to be one of the better abilities to take. Um, if we take a look at the other things, it's mostly just a little bit of passive adjustments. Like this used to be 15% crit chance, now it's 10 uh, they did switch around two talents, so this Watch It Burn and the Singe talent have been flipped. So they now are in different places, but you would still take both of them because they're fantastic abilities anyways. They lowered the Rune of Helios damage buff by a little bit but and tried to buff Reheat, but then again, Reheat just doesn't do anything. No one cares about mana, like, at all. You just pop a mana pot and a regen pot and you're good to go. And there's just tons of other ways to get your mana back, right? Like, this... This is not a thing. Mana is non-existent pretty much in the game. Uh, so with that being said, uh, yeah, just a few minor changes on that. They tried to buff Flamethrower. I tried it out. Its its problem is it's just so clunky. Maybe in a PvE setting it could be a bit better now for like dungeon groups where you're trying to like mow down a bunch of mobs and do big AoE pools. That, that's the only scenario I could see for it. But everything else remained unchanged. So you would probably be going the standard Fire Mage build, um, you know, with like Burnout, Fireball, Pillar of Fire, but you could probably exchange Incinerate if you were more of a Dive Mage. It just depends on your play style. If you want to get rid of the, uh, you know, Pillar of Fire and get in Incinerate. But you have a couple of moves that help with mana and stuff like that. But all in all, it's been roughly the same. Um, I think Mages are still in a fantastic position. They did probably need a bit of a damage adjustment because people were dying. Uh, but I, I don't know... Like, people dying is not necessarily, like, the damage that the mage is bringing, more so as there's, like, no real viable way to, like, have defense, right? Since the resilience got removed, 
uh, for working for everything and just crits, everyone's a lot squishier. So now we're just seeing that balance of what people can do damage wise. And, and, you know, that's where they're trying to adjust. They're like, Oh crap, we need to tone it back a little bit, get rid of some of this damage from mages and stuff, but it's still like, don't worry guys. Like mages are still fantastic. They're in a great spot, still doing tons of damage, right? Just slightly lower, but along with everybody else. So welcome to the club, you know, <laughs> something like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the ice gauntlet since we just talked about mages. Uh, and then we'll go up to the, uh, life staff here. But the Ice Gauntlet received a lot of changes. It got 10 seconds added to a lot of the abilities here. Um, the Ice Shower in particular got a 10 second increase to it. Instead of 20, it is now 30. And then they also lowered the tick rate on Ice Storm. So it's now going to be ticking three times a second instead of four times a second. So that's going to make it do a lot less damage. So that's essentially a 25% damage nerf on Ice Storm. I could see you playing this either way. You could take Ice Shower or you could take Ice Storm. It's up to you. But Ice Shower has been such a pivotal ability in PvP that it's almost necessary as it's going to be your primary peel method and a great way to root your opponents as they come through. I think that Ice Spikes or the Mighty Spike talent at the end, Ice Spikes, is going to be on the rise because this is a very good ability. And especially in the hands of a great player, this will be dangerous. And if you can get the perk on this where if you finish somebody or kill somebody with this, you're going to reset all your cooldowns. So you're going to get that Ice Shower back. You're going to get that Entomb back and you're going to get a lot of other stuff. So it's pretty much up to you. Preference in terms of Ice Storm or Ice Shower, you can take one or the two. But I think Ice Spikes is one of the ways to go right now. They tried to buff the pylon a little bit and change some things around. Um, they've been messing with it slowly over time. It's a great one versus one ability, but other than that, it doesn't really have a place. It does do a lot of DPS, so it's actually quite strong in PvE. So if you haven't tried that out in your PvE, or that might be a good route or avenue to go. Uh, and then they try to keep buffing Wind Chill again. It got more damage over time increased by like 4% per hit, but it's... You're still channeling some weird little frost breath, and it just doesn't feel good. It really doesn't. It doesn't do a lot of damage, and worse of all, it pushes enemies away. So instead of keeping them clumped up, it like scatters them all over, and it's just a nightmare for players to use and like hit with. Um, other than that, they received a lot of nerfs in the tree, so a lot of lowering of the damage for the crits and uh, different passive talents. So they're trying to scale back that mage damage a bit as they feel it's too strong at the moment. Um, I mean, I don't know if that's what's it, guys. Like, like honestly, Great Axe Warhammer does the most damage. Like, they do a lot of damage. Like, yeah, mages do damage from range, but, like, in terms of damage that can actually kill you, there's a lot of weapons, too. So we'll see how that all plays out. I mean, I, I like the slight lowering, right? But, like, let's be careful. Like, don't nerf mages too hard or else they're going to be unplayable. And that's not going to be fun for anybody, right? So let's make sure that if, you know, this is the adjustment, it looks decent enough. Let's keep it right around there because, you know, we don't want our mage friends to just, like, not be able to play the game anymore, right? So I don't want to see things headed down that path. Uh, the ultimate chill also got nerfed a little bit, 25% um, now instead of 35%. Uh, but it's still the best talent that you can take is this one's basically dead in the water unless you're running a PvE pylon build um, or like some sort of 1v1 dueling build maybe. But it's just so niche that it, it's hard to find a place for that. Uh, everything else is roughly about the same. So um, I, I would expect mages to be doing a lot more bursting around getting an ice shower and then a, a guaranteed mighty spike. And hopefully that kills them. They get the refresh duration and it refunds all their cooldowns. And then they can get some more damage in with the fire staff. I'm seeing something like that, or maybe even a switch off. I've seen some mages using the Void Gauntlet, and we'll talk about that last because there's quite a bit to talk about there. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to the Life Staff for now. Let's check this one out. So there has been a lot of healing reduction on a lot of things in the Life Staff. So they're lowering the cooldown of, or the healing from Divine Embrace. They lowered it from Sacred Ground, so it's now going to heal less per tick. It was 20%. Weapon damage is now 16% weapon damage. And then the heal over time got further reduced from that. Uh, they reduce Holy Ground. They reduce Blissful Touch, which is the light attack healing thing. They reduced a lot of different things. They did buff Splash of Light for more of an AoE group healing type situation. Uh, but they seem to be getting rid of a lot of the 
heal over time and also single target healings so they lowered the cool they lowered the uh, scaling on lights embrace they lowered the healing on beacon and they're just bumping it all down because it is a bit too much it has been a problem people cannot kill healers like even three people sometimes just can't kill a healer they're just too tanky they t they heal for way too much they're just constantly at full health and it seems like unless they are permanently stun locked they will just regenerate themselves up so these are probably needed changes this is going to be about the build that i think will be best uh going into the future so you still want sacred ground because of that 50 percent talent and until this is gone as well as the perk that gives fortify this is always going to be your standard sacred ground is going to be a standard Light's Embrace is still very powerful heal, and it's now giving you more mana back, and more importantly, gives stamina to targets, which is actually really good, um, especially if well-timed. Beacon still being one of the stronger abilities, pumping out tons of healing over time. So your build will probably look like this. For wars in different situations, you can mix it up. I would even say you could start putting in Splash of Light. It's, it's getting really powerful, and I know a lot of healers that want to top the charts do use Splash of Light. Uh, I've seen a few use Orb of Protection as well. I've never seen anybody use Divine Embrace, so, um, you know, it is what it is on that situation. But they lowered a lot of other talents and just general healing efficiency overall. So you're going to be having a little bit more of, of a struggle to keep people alive. And that's where I said that that Hatchet coming into play could tip things because if Hatchet cloud is lasting longer and it's keeping up debuffs more consistently and the cooldowns coming back constantly and your healing is lowered you might be in that situation where hatchet could potentially counter a lot of the life staff players and that's not something we've seen until now so that'll be interesting um now we'll talk about void gauntlet because i know there was some perks that were being tested um, don't know if they'll come through but there was a healing reduction perk reducing all healing by like 50 percent i believe it was on oblivion correct me if i'm wrong uh there was also a couple of other interesting things coming in here but the void gauntlet is something i made a video on in the past it has a lot of interesting ideas in the decay side which is like a range side but they just don't seem to be that good in application the annihilation side does have a lot of really powerful abilities especially this petrifying scream coming in which is a two second brute on a 15 second cooldown to everybody in front of you within five yards and it will also root them another second if they're below half and give you fortify the void blade is kind of an item that or a skill that turns your gauntlet into a melee dealing powerhouse it has armor reduce it has damage over time it has damage it has life leech you name it it has it so this is a really good ability and probably a staple for void gauntlet right now oblivion being another strong ability giving a power to people within the zone and weaken when you hit enemies within the zone so a massive buffing and debuffing tool and I could see this Void Collar thing really being great as it just, once this thing is active, you're just life leeching into infinity and it's going to be super hard to kill you uh, when this is going down. The way I see this weapon working is probably for mages. I think if you pair Fire Staff with this, they will have a very hard time. Like once somebody gets up on you like a melee and you pull out the Void Gauntlet and the Void Blade and you start hitting them really hard and stun and rooting them and life leeching off of them. They're going to be like, oh man, I wish I didn't enter melee combat with this mage. And this could be an interesting thing to see. I also see it being a fantastic weapon for people with the life staff. Especially some of these support abilities on the other side. You can weaken people, empower people. This essence rupture on the right side tree is insane for PvE. It gives everyone 20% lifesteal on the target constantly. So you could probably just put this on the boss in AFK realistically i think everyone would heal themselves up to full it's quite wild so um you know keep an eye out for this this tree can be more of a life staff supporter side on the right side with decay you could even use it on the annihilation side as well but where i really see this build shining is going to be in wars and this is probably going to be a weapon that you pair with a sword and shield a tank build so that you can set on point and I think Oblivion, it was one of them was reducing the healing. Maybe I was wrong on that. And then the other one was stripping away debuffs somehow or buffs from people. So it was pulling off buffs. So if you can set on the point and pull off buffs from people and kind of get away some of these abilities, that could be quite good. 
but we don't have any way to test the perks at the moment because they're just not in the PTR from what I've seen. None of the boxes or the gear have any void perks on them. It's just speculation on what's going to be happening and maybe data mined information. So if that does come out and it does some, have some sort of healing reduction and it has some way to strip off buffs from people, it's going to be massive. So I could easily see a tank build being viable in wars where you're super tanky, full con, and you go on the point with a sword shield and then you pull out the void gauntlet and you start rooting people. You start empowering your allies and weakening the enemy and ripping away their buffs. Like that could really be quite strong. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, so as we kind of look at the meta and the builds in the future, this is probably going to be what we're looking at. So all in all, in summary, a lot of buffs. Some things to look out for would probably be a sword shield DPS build, a throwing hatchet build, definitely any spear build. The hammer is just going to be ridiculous here, as always. Uh, Great Axe still a phenomenal build as well. Bow might have some interesting DPS coming in with a lot of its uh, AoE abilities and getting the cooldowns back. We'll have to see on that. Musket might go up a little bit just due to Sticky Bomb. Fire Staff probably going to be in the same spot it was before. Slightly lower damage, but still fantastic weapon. Life Staff is now going to have to work for their paycheck as you're going to need to be a bit better and heal a bit more. Uh, mechanically wise instead of relying on the kit to top you off fully ice gauntlet receiving a bit of nerf so it's going to be a bit of time before mages find out what they like but i think this ice spike is the way to go it definitely seems to hit incredibly hard and void gauntlet is going to be a game changer it is going to finally introduce a lot more mechanics into the game that we haven't seen before maybe being healing reduction more debuff stripping and also more roots and cc so you're going to have now all of a sudden a melee weapon for casters and mages and that could be quite scary so that will definitely shift everything up again for sure and i definitely see uh, a last mention because i kind of skipped over it rapier could be getting up there it is a very high skill cap weapon Weapon. I think very good players will make this weapon look amazing and average players will wonder why this weapon's in the game but it's actually good um, and I think that the bleed tree or the blood tree will probably be the highest DPS in the game PvE wise. I really don't see how not and I think with the perfect build and the right stuff this could be very 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 scary weapon. Uh, in terms of PvE, so if we do enter the future with those mutated dungeons and things start getting hard and you need to meet DPS checks, that might be the way to go. It definitely might. Uh, so we got some interesting stuff all in all. I know this was a bit of a long video, but thank you for sticking through it um, as there is quite a lot of information to digest here. And of course, again, these are all my thoughts and personal opinions. So take all of this with a grade of, of uh, salt. I could be completely wrong and maybe have no idea what I'm talking about. Or I could be right and I tested a lot of stuff and that's great on me. Uh, but again, it's all speculation and could be changed at any moment. So just keep that in mind. Numbers could be adjusted and that would change things. Uh, so once again, thank you for taking the time to listen and watch to all these videos. I definitely appreciate that. Make sure to check out the subscribe, like, and uh, bell button down below. We also have the join button for members who wish to join the channel and a Discord in the description link uh, down in the little comment section. So thanks again for watching, everyone, and we will catch you in the next video.